I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm going to talk about a question that I get asked all the time. I get asked this question by photographers, both pro and amateur. I also get asked by non-photographers or civilians as I like to call them. Just kidding, I'm not actually that pretentious. But we are talking about something that people do perceive as pretentious today and that is the Leica brand. And so I'm going to discuss with you and I'm going to answer that question that I get asked all the time. Why Leica? Specifically, I'm going to go into why I use the Leica M system for my personal work and for my professional work. So stay tuned to find out why Leica. So for those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you're noticing like, maybe you're noticing like, why is he in a different location? Did he move? I did not move. I'm still here in Hanoi, Vietnam. I'm still in my same apartment. I just moved upstairs into the guest room and this is my new setup for now. I will make some adjustments at some point, but I won't cave. I promise you, I won't cave and do like that thing that every YouTuber, especially YouTubers that talk about tech and photography, where you have like the, you know, the shelf and you have to have like a blue light and a pink. I don't really understand, but it's like they all do the same exact thing. I might enhance this area, but I'm not. I'm not going to conform to that. I'm just going simple. That's sort of the theme today. Simple and minimalistic. So let's start with how I use this camera system, how it works for me. Again, just because I use it for a certain way doesn't mean it works for you. And just because I don't use it for a certain way doesn't mean that that won't work for you. I think the important thing about photography, the important thing about your equipment is really, really knowing yourself, knowing your habits, knowing what you like to do, knowing like how you like to craft a picture, craft a story, how you like to work, your workflow, your process, not just your workflow in post-production, but your workflow on the ground, how you like to work, where do you like to keep your camera, uh, what's your thought process when you're doing a story, how much time do you dedicate to story? All of that is factoring into my philosophy on why I chose this camera. I'll start with why I switched over to this camera system. I started using it for my personal work, my documentary work. Specifically, I started using it for my personal project, Kindred Guardian, where I document people around the world who dedicate their lives to animal welfare and wildlife conservation. So I started using it in for long form documentary. These are long stories. These are long form projects, things I will spend, you know, days or even weeks documenting the same, same subject and the same story. It also fits into a cohesive project, which I'll be working on for several years, hopefully. So, so that was the thought process when I switched. I wanted a camera system to get me back into how I used to shoot, which was to slow down a bit, which was to force me to slow down a bit. I know my habits. I know I tend to overshoot. I know I tend to be very reactive and sometimes I forget to slow down and think. And I thought that this camera system would make me do that because it does lack all the bells and whistles. And I know that might sound crazy to some people. So why pay that much money to have less? But really for me, when I have less going on inside, I'm more focused on what's happening out there, but I'm more in the moment, like I've said plenty of times, and, I, and I'm just more alert and more focused and more present. I've used it on stories all over the world. I traveled to Kenya with this two times to do a story about the last two northern white rhinos left in the world. I've taken it to Malaysia to do a story of gibbons, to Suriname to do a story about sloths, to Thailand to do a story about street dogs. I use this exclusively for my personal project. And I have loved every single minute of it. And again, I'll get into the why in a little bit, but I just want you to understand how I'm using this camera. Camera system, I've also evolved into using it for my editorial photography. So I took it on my first assignment for the New York Times doing a travel story in uh, central Vietnam, and I loved it. I loved everything about it. It worked fantastically, it worked flawlessly. I was a little bit nervous doing a professional assignment with this because you know, you don't have time to, to make any errors. It's all manual focus. There's no screen on the M10D as you can see here. Um, uh, but again, I've also uh, added an M10 as well as a backup camera or when I use a two camera body system, which I very, very rarely use, but it's mainly as a, it's a, like the world's, not the world, but it's a very expensive backup camera, but it's an insurance policy. Uh, then I also took this camera system to Myanmar for a story about elephant conservation there for the Smithsonian Magazine. And again, I, these are stories that I would normally take out my whole Canon system with me, a giant bag, a bunch of lenses. And on these stories, I brought two cameras and three lenses and that's it. And I felt great. I felt light. 
Uh, I, I didn't feel like I missed any moments and I just felt more present. I felt like I overall did a better job. So that's how I'm using this camera. I started using it just for pure documentary and pure personal work. It's evolved into using this for assignment work. And once I got comfortable using it for my personal work, I've, I, it evolved into this being my go-to camera setup for my editorial and assignment work and then just my everyday personal camera. I would take out uh, going on holiday or just taking it out going uh, just to do street photography. So, so that's how I've been using this camera system. So I won't go into all the lenses and all the kit that I have. I'll just quickly go through it. I did a whole separate episode about my exact Leica kit. You can see that in the description box. I'll just go through quickly my setup here. This is really my go-to setup, my Leica M10D here. It's an odd camera system to many people. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people, just like the Leica. It's like Leica doesn't make sense to a lot of people, and then this camera within the Leica system doesn't make sense to a lot of people. The Leica M10D is a digital camera without a screen. I know that sounds crazy. It's an $8,000 camera without a screen, and but this is my go-to camera most of the time. And then I've used the 35 millimeter 1.4 Leica Summulux lens. That's my 90 to 95% of my shots come from that. Portraits, documentary, everything I do really with that. I do have my backup Leica M10 here. Every once in a while, if I do need the screen, if I'm using this little bad boy here, this little Leica L Pro macro adapter, which in travel, I use it for you know food shots and detail shots. When I want to get close. This little thing here is really cool. It's expensive, but like everything, with Leica, but this screws on to all your different lenses. I can screw it onto my 35 and it instantly becomes a macro. Screw it onto my 75, it becomes a macro. Has these little step up rings so it can adapt to all these different lenses. I also use it for my animal stuff as well when I want to get details, a close shot of the eyes or the hands or, you know, paws or whatever I'm photographing. Uh, it just comes in handy every once in a while. For the travel stuff, just to have a super wide lens, I've got the Leica Super Elmar 21 3.4 lens here. It's a beautiful lens. I just don't shoot wide that often, but it's just nice to have for those scene setters for my personal project every once in a while. But often for travel stories, this comes in handy for those like really, I consider it ultra wide. A lot of, a lot of people consider it 16, but like that's as wide as I like to go, 21. And, and then it, I feel like it gets too distorted, but that's just a personal preference. I've also got a 135 here. This very rarely comes out of my bag. It's in there as a, another insurance policy every once in a while. Like I had a, a moment in, in Suriname where I was documenting a lady who does sloth rehabilitation and there was a sloth way far away with a baby and you know I couldn't get that close without scaring it. I couldn't get that close because I can't climb like a sloth so this did come in handy. I, but again, I'm not doing pure wildlife photography. I do wildlife photojournalism. So typically my stories allow me to get close to my subject. So very rarely do I need that lens. So that's the system. Now you understand what I'm using here and, and how I use it. Now you're gonna just ask yourself why. First of all, let's address price right away. That's the thing that scares most people away. And I get it, it is expensive. And it is expensive for a lot of people. I get paid to do my photography work, so it makes a little bit more sense to me. But there's also a reason you don't see a lot of professional photographers, professional editorial photographers, or even personal project photographers using this. It is a big investment. But it's not as crazy as you might think. Hear me out. This camera here, the Leica M10D, the features on this camera, it turns on, it turns off, you can adjust the ISO. The aperture is not in the camera. The aperture you change manually on the lens. The shutter you change obviously on the camera and you can link it up to the wireless app here and send images wirelessly to your phone. Doesn't have a screen. Those are the features. This Leica here, M10, backup camera, has a screen, no bells and whistles, no major features. Okay, so you're still saying, yeah, what is that? how does that explain price? Okay, $8,000 camera, $4,000 camera, several thousand dollars in lenses here. Now, ask yourself this. Your Canon, a ton of features, I totally get it. Your Nikon, your Sony, a ton of features in there, totally get it as well. But for a lot of you out there, especially professionals, but amateurs do this as well, how often are you updating? How often is Canon updating their cameras? How often is Sony updating their cameras? How often are you chasing those updates? Right? So a new camera maybe comes out every two years or every four years. How often are you upgrading? And why are you upgrading? You're upgrading because, oh, well, it did have 24 megapixels and now it has 30. Or it had 30 and now it has 50. And, and it has 4K and now the new one has 6K or 8K. This, there's nothing to update. I'm buying this camera. It has 24 megapixels. Is that enough? Yeah. It's enough. It's crazy that people don't think it's enough. I've 
sold prints to this through a fine art gallery, giant prints. People that look at this stuff professionally love the quality. Clients who bought these prints and spent a lot of money on limited edition prints love the quality. Editors who know what to look for in a photo, that zoom in and look for it, that publish it in magazines that go around the world in print, no problems with this camera. So I always look at it like, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Now I get it, every once in a while you might need 50 megapixels for a billboard campaign, but that's such a small amount of people that need that. So what's there to upgrade? <laughs> I don't need any more features. This can take photos exactly how I need them. The output is exactly what I need. So when you think about that, it might not seem as crazy. So if you're buying a $3,000 Nikon or a $3,000 Sony and then upgrading it every few years, that starts to add up. You're changing, you know, maybe not upgrading lenses, but you're changing the camera body. So that's one reason. That's why it's maybe not as crazy price-wise as you think. I don't need to upgrade this camera for another five years, for another 10 years, maybe another 20 years if I make it that long. Uh, it has everything I need to do what I need to do. And that's all that matters. And that leads me to my next point is the minimalism, the simplicity, and how that plays into my philosophy as a photographer and my philosophy on why I dig this camera system and why it has worked for me. If you ever get a chance to go into a store, a Leica store or another store that sells Leicas, go and pick one up and hold it in your hand and hold it up to your eye. Hold it with both hands, hold it with one hand, wear it on your shoulder. Everything's just right about this camera. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but let's start with materials. The way the metal feels in your hand, it feels solid. The mechanical part, the fluidity of the lenses, you know, with the manual focus lens, it's so fluid the way you do it. You're feeling connected to the camera. You're feeling part of it. The notches in the aperture, uh, the, where the shutter button's placed, the weight of the camera, the metal, everything about it, the rubber here on the back, Everything just feels right. And is that worth $8,000? Probably no for a lot of people. But if I'm using this camera for days upon days and weeks upon weeks and months upon months and years upon years, that starts to add up and that stuff does matter. So this camera makes me want to have it with me. It makes me want to have it in my hand, which makes me carry it more often, which also makes me more likely to want it on me throughout the course of the day. It's not weighing me down physically in my hands and it's not weighing me down mentally with all the different options. So the aesthetic plays a lot. It plays a lot in, in, in my day to day when I'm out there shooting, when I'm getting up at 4.30, out the door at 5, documenting intense stories, keeping my mind razor sharp while I'm trying to capture this, these different stories, these different moments, anticipate moments, try to figure out what's going on, try to figure out what I'm missing in my story, where I need to be to get the moments to make my story come true, make, making sure my story is accurate. There's so many variables to weigh in when you're doing something that intense and telling a deep story and working on something you're very passionate about and it's very personal to you that that mentally can be you know that mentally can weigh on you so I'm always looking to simplify the experience so physically like I want this camera around my neck I want it on my shoulder I want it in my hand I want it up to my eye that's all very important all that adds up when you're using this camera as much as I'm using it and as much as maybe you're using it and maybe it doesn't matter to you but I'm just sort of explaining where I'm coming from so that is, is sort of clearing me physically, right? It's, it's, it's not weighing me down physically because it's something I, I want to have on me because I like the way it feels in my hand. I like the materials. I like the way it feels everywhere when I'm attaching it in my bag, like I said, on my neck, on my shoulder, up to my eye, or just in one hand wandering around or even just sitting there in front of me. So that's important. The next thing is important is the minimalism, weighing me down mentally. Now, I know this doesn't matter to everyone, but if you open up a Sony menu system. It's like insane for me. It's insane for me to process. A lot of you, it's easy and you like that and I totally get that and I'm not knocking it. But for me, it, it's like, it really mentally weighs me down. I've been lost in their menu system or changed things by accident or changed features by accident. I didn't know they were going off. And, I, and I'm a professional photographer, so like, it, it, it's a lot. And it's a lot of stuff that I don't care about. It's a lot of stuff I don't need. Again, minimalistic like that is making me clear that's making me more focused so having a menu system that, that is so complicated all of that effort all of that energy is going into that instead of what it should be going into which is all the other things i talked about capturing the moment telling the story anticipating the shot understanding my subject making sure i'm accurate um, making sure i'm getting what i'm missing and i'm exactly where i need to be when the moment happens all of that you want to be razor, razor sharp. So everything that can take away, everything that takes away from that, I'm trying to block out from my mind. Anything that contributes to my focus, 
I'm paying attention to. And this does that. This camera to me is simple and I love that. And I know it's a lot, it's a lot, it's crazy a lot to pay for simplicity, but I turn this camera on, I put my aperture in, I put my ISO in, I dial in my shutter and I shoot and that's all I have to do. That's it, that's the only thing I worry. I very, I very rarely even change lenses. I'm just there, I'm present. Again, nothing, none of my energy is going in here. It's all going out there. A lot of people might stop me right now and say like, yeah, just shoot film, that's it. That's the most pure. And, but that's not what I'm getting at. Like that, that, it's not about purity, it's about simplicity. And I know, I know film can be very simple as well. But for me, I don't enjoy that process of post-production. I don't enjoy my time, I don't hate it, but I, that, that's not the part I look forward to is, is Lightroom and, 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 and toning my images and going through that. I just do that quickly and that's just kind of a necessary evil, I have to do it. Like, so the film process to me isn't that exciting. The not having a screen part is just exciting for me because I, I, I like to look at it later, I like that surprise, but the post-production part isn't fun for me. I like to sequence my images and look at the images and figure out how I'm gonna tell the story with those images and the order they're gonna be in and then look at the images closely and see what I'm missing from my story and see what I've got and understand and stuff like that. But for me, the film part is I don't enjoy the post-production so that's why I don't shoot film. So that's why this camera, that's the compromise there for those of you that are saying like, just shoot film because I know some of you out there will be film people who who will ask that question. So that's why I wanted to address that. So really, it's not a laundry list of things. It's not the things you would think of. Those are the two things really that matter to me. That's my philosophy and that's why the Leica system works for me because it makes me more present. It makes me in the moment. And really, it's, it's kind of as simple as that. I, I know some of you might have been expecting all these different things about lens sharpness. And I do like the look of the Leica lenses and I get that, but that's not the most important thing. That's not even a huge factor for me. It's those two things that I mentioned, it's the fact that aesthetically and the way that it feels, because I spend so much time with my camera, like I'm constantly with my camera. And when I go out and shoot, it's just like, it's, it's everywhere. It's just like such a part of me. So that is extremely important to someone like me is to have something that I want to pick up. I want to take out with me and I want to have it on me at all times. And the second part is the simplicity and the minimalistic menu and the minimalistic and lack, minimalistic or even just lack of features. Again, it sounds crazy to spend all that money, but I did talk about why I think the money's not as crazy as you think. It's still crazy, but it's just not as crazy as you think. So the, that's important to me. So no camera, you pick up a Leica, it's not gonna make you a better photographer. You pick up the best Canon, the best Sony, it's not gonna make you a better photographer. It's just not, like, it. it it isn't. You think it is and you might make excuses or you might like have that little rush really quickly like, oh, it's gonna make me better, but it's not. It's not. This won't make you better spending $8,000 on this camera or spending a, or buying an expensive Canon system with all. It just won't make you better. But what will make you better is experience. Going out and taking photographs. Working on your craft. Constantly paying attention, again, to what's out there and in front of you and around you and not what's in your camera. So this camera doesn't make me a better photographer in the way you might think and no camera will in the way that you might think, but it does indirectly make me a better photographer because it forces me into better habits, it forces me to be more present and it really forces me to remove the clutter and have clarity and be able to focus on what's happening around me and that forces me or puts me in better habits to become a better photographer and to evolve as a photographer. So that's, that's the why. That's the why Leica. That's the why Leica M system. So I hope that makes sense to some of you out there and how I use it might not be how you use it. And don't always think about how cameras need to be used based on how they're marketed or based on how the masses use them. A lot of people say, we have it doesn't work for wedding photographers. It could. It might not, but it could work for you. You could find a way that this could work for you in wedding photography, or maybe not. And documentary photographers, it's not like this is purely for that either. You can use other systems. It's really what works for you specifically. The more you understand how you work, how you like to work, your good habits and your bad habits, then choose your camera system based around that. So is the Leica for you? I don't know. What I do know is it works for me. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go out there and shoot, and have a wonderful day. Bye.